What if you're 21 and you inherit a Shelby and then you find out it's not a Shelby? How would you take it? Or maybe it is a real Shelby. We were going to go find out. You encourage people to, you know, call you for leads on car discoveries and stuff. Right. I just love to get these calls. I actually inherited a 1967 Shelby GT500. I'm 21 years old. And I am not, like, too knowledgeable on cars, nor do I have a, a passion for it. My name is Elizabeth Mendoza. I was married to Yasser Mendoza, and we were the owners of this car. I'm in Texas. The car's in Michigan. I really wanted to get out there, even though my instincts told me this car is a clone. But nothing wrong with a clone. Those inboard headlights get my motor running. I love those things. Like on this restored original 67 Shelby, I shot for Mustang Monthly. Or on this 1967 Shelby GT500 clone that the owner got creative with. So, as I'm looking over these emailed photos, I'm daydreaming. How am I going to get out to Michigan for this one car? And then it dawned on me, I needed to go to Wisconsin. Isn't that pretty close to Michigan? To Bob Perkins Restoration, right outside Juneau, Wisconsin. Dennis and Bob rolled out that Boss 302 for pictures, and when we got done, Bob was going with me to look at a Boss 429 barn find up in Free Soil, Michigan. As luck would have it, that dang old Shelby was midway between Chicago and Free Soil, Michigan, right on that road. Now we had Bob Perkins with us, and talk about credentials. Back at the shop, he said, Over the last 40 years, I've been the head judge in both SAC and the Mustang Club of America for numerous years. SAC is S-A-A-C, the Shelby American Automobile Club, dedicated to the preservation and enjoyment of the cars of Shelby American. Okay, so great to have Bob along. Look at this car. We can let Avery know whether he has a real Shelby or a clone. Either way, he's a winner. I bet you the car's back in that garage back there, yeah. huh? behind that motorcycle. Okay, now. Hi. Good. Hey. Hello. Good to meet you, Good Jerry. To meet you. Jerry Heasley. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm Avery. Um, we'll go over here into my garage. Uh, I got pictures set up for you guys. Um, I also do know there is additional parts. Uh, throughout the years, he's collected you know parts try to restore okay so it's under here yes what i know is that it originally came from mexico when i was about seven eight years old uh we brought it up when i was a kid and i it's just been in my family ever since i'm not too knowledgeable on the car but i just know that it's been passed from wisconsin to texas back to michigan so the hood when it got put back on, I don't believe it got put on correctly, so it doesn't fit back in correctly. Oh, he's got some dice there. <laughs> Just a second. It's packed in here, huh? Oh yeah, it's been in here for about eight years. The GT500. What kind of wheels are those, Bob? Ants and Sprint or Anson Sprint replica. Then somebody put Shelby center caps on them? Well, they put the label in the middle, yeah. So when's the last time it was started? That'd be a question for my mom. Right back. I wonder if this thing was Shelbyized in Mexico or. Bob must be thinking it's a clone already. Member yeah. team Shelby.com, huh? You didn't find the title, right? No, I did not. Oh, hey, uh, hey. I'm, I'm Jerry. Elizabeth. Yeah, I do the filming, uh, the, the yeah, I do the videos and stuff. Okay. You don't mind this? Well, I don't look YouTube. that beautiful, but yeah, okay. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> yeah, this is Bob Perkins. Hi, Bob. Hi. I'm Elizabeth. Uh, head judge for the Mustang Club of America. Can you just kind of tell me about it? It was my husband's family. My husband was from Mexico. Oh. His father bought it for his older brother, Edwin. But this is one of the original pictures. And I know in this photo here, my husband was like the little one in the photo. So I know that's when the car was brand new. You want me to take it out to the light? Yeah. And uh, 
This used to hang on the wall. I made it. <coughs> but I can only really go off of everything I've ever been told. Yeah, that's great right there. Yeah. But kinda... right here, this picture right here is when it was first original. He was born in 74, and he's the littlest one there. That was his oldest brother's gift. And he's from Mexico? My husband, yes. Yeah. But the car originally came from Wisconsin because they lived on both sides, American and Mexican side in Laredo. My brother-in-law, who he's an American, he lived in Laredo, Texas. That's where it went first. And then he crossed it over when we bought it. And we brought it up here. And here's actually the day we brought it up here, me and him. This is actually the day. This is actually in Mexico. You can see the background. And this is like on the road, maybe Oklahoma on the way home. And this is one of the first times we drove it. And he's putting gas in it at the gas station. The car was in Wisconsin, do you think? It was time? in Wisconsin. It was brought to Laredo, Texas. It stayed in Laredo, Texas till about 2000, maybe two or three. So when you guys got the car, it had all the Shelby accessories. Yeah, and stuff we on we it. never removed them, and okay. when we did prime it and everything, I literally myself went with like masking tape and put it over there because we couldn't buy new ones. So like I literally took masking tape and went around it with like a little, you know, knife and covered all that. You can see it's all original, but yeah, we primed it and stuff with that red color. It was originally a silver colored car. Now is there another tag, the Shelby tag? On for the fender, you said that the one that's on there was remade with a different number on well, it. Well, he just punched different numbers on it. You, I, you know what? That is a good question. It might actually, if you guys were to lift this up, might have the original under there. I really can't answer that. I really can't. I just really can't answer that. So, if you want to try to lift it up, you can. Yeah, that's that's definitely not typical type of stamping on there. Like I said, everything I just know is everything my he well, really told us, to you know. And, what? We need to take one of those rivets out and slide that tag in the port number will be under it. Okay. And then it'll tell, the fifth digit will tell us what the engine code was. Okay. And if it's the same as the code that's on the door tag there, then originally it wasn't the show because it would have had to be a hypo. Are you good with that? That's totally of, fine. This is your car? Well, we need to remove one of those rivets, slide the tag back, and then look at the original VIN number stamped on the inner fender panel here. And I can tell that this panel here has been worked on or replaced because there's no spot welds in it, so it may not even have a number under there. Definitely need to know what the original Ford VIN is because if it's the same as on the tag on the door, then it's a two-barrel 289, and then that wouldn't be an original Shelby. Being that it was supposedly modified in Wisconsin rather than Mexico. See, I thought if it was modified in Mexico, then that really, you know, you have a little bit different stuff on the wheels and things like that. It makes you think about, well, what happened to the car over the years, but it has deluxe interior in it, has the correct style interior, but this is gonna be the key here. We need to see what that engine identification code is because that this tag here has definitely been remade. So, it, here is the tag. It got caught on fire racing it in Mexico, so that they dumped a 351 Windsor into it. Could that engine that caught on fire have been a 428? Here's a stock 428 and a 67 Shelby. Okay, we need to see the Ford number. We're going for the knockout punch. Drill out a rivet and look for the engine code, the fifth digit of the Ford VIN. Yeah, they need a little bit bigger fit. Well, I think this will help you get closure on it, know what it is, you need to know what it is first. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I like the fact he's been very truthful that he's not into cars. They both are in that same, they don't. And, you know, I, I've been over it a long time ago. <laughs> I enjoyed the time I spent with my husband and children with the hobby, but they grew up, we parted ways. Oh, oh, oh. What'd you find? Some big ones. Okay. All right. Now we're in business. <laughs> well, we're just about there. There we go. There we go. That's it. Now we'll see the moment of truth. Is there even anything there? Yeah, it's double stamped. Not that uncommon for the driver's side. 
Boy, it's been painted yeah. over so much. It's 7F C right there. See the C? C for the 289 2 barrel, the engine this car was born with, so not a Shelby. This stamping is for title and registration on a Mustang. Ford also stamped the VIN into the door data plate if it has survived, and this one looks like it has. This one is 7F. 02C11757. The VIN of this Mustang. With respect to Shelby tags, anybody can buy one. Like this tag that came off another 1967 Shelby clone. They're just for fun, not for title purposes. Kind of like building a better clone to look like the original Shelby. Same thing with this old Shelby tag that was on this car. But throw it away? Maybe not. It's part of the car's heritage. Will old clones ever be collectible? This is all full of body filler here, so it probably had rust in the shock tower here. The shock tower um, is right here, and then where the inner panels overlap, there's like six spot welds in there, and you can see it's the bundle of the body fillers flaking off, so it's been worked on. It was, like you said, it was in Wisconsin. It was probably rusty. The fenders, the, the, all the fiberglass stuff is reproduction, too. So, you know, it's just leading to... Uh, but it does have some original Shelby parts. It, it has some some stuff on there, you know. That, I know we spent a lot at Tony the Brand to store. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, a lot of Tony stuff, some was original and some was reproduction, even back in the early 80s. So, um, but it's a combination of stuff and... Uh, but, you know, it doesn't have the under gauge dash pod, which right. is unique to the Shelby. But um, somebody did put this this roll bar in. He yeah. did. Oh, he put that in? Mm-hmm. If that's the original pane in the jam there, too, that's probably not a, the silver's not a, I don't think that's going to be a Shelby color. What? This picture right here in the silver, uh -huh. that's the day they gave it to the oldest brother. Yeah, you know, your husband, you said, was the smallest person here. Though. Yeah, he is, but the oldest brother got it. And we ended up purchasing it from him. Okay. It's, it's not a real Shelby, obviously, right? Correct. But it is a fastback. You, you thought it was a Shelby uh, for, for a long time, right? Oh, yeah, I did. And which would be a very valuable car. Yes. Now, it's not near as bad. I mean, what's your thoughts now? I mean, how are you feeling? Uh, still would like to get rid of it. Still would like to sell it. <laughs> uh, that, that honestly surprises me, but it doesn't because... You know, he did a lot of modifications to the car, and I understand, but at the same time, I really wish it was an original Shelby. As far as I knew and he knew, that's what we've always been told, that it was an original one. Yeah. But, you know, you seem to be, take it pretty good, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. It well, don't surprise us. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> I really don't know value. I would have to get that from you guys, so... <laughs> Bob, you want to talk to him about that over here a little bit, or? And, uh, but a 67 Fastback is still a, a real desirable car, to, to whether you make it a stock vehicle or a resto mod or just a fun driver. If the car was actually running where, the, where you could do a video and put it on uh, one of the auction sites where you start it up and it runs good, that's a big plus. It's, it's a lot easier to sell stuff when somebody can get it and turn the key and drive it home. I mean, somebody um, will definitely want that car. Yeah. And I'm good with it. I got myself, I got my kids, you know. Yeah. We're doing good in life. Life is good, man. Yeah. You know, it really is. Good. So well, I just want good. my boys to feel that way too, you know. Yeah. And I really appreciate you men helping him out. Got to get an idea of, um, you know. The trueness of it. Yeah, because you don't want somebody to come in here and buy it for $5,000. If you're the seller, you need to be able to price the car. 